episode 43 of the Downtown Podcast. I'm your host, Dylan Jorgensen. And for those of you that are new, what this podcast is about, taking our Ticket Cake headquarters and turning it into a place where the community can come each week to talk about the news, events, and people that matter most to us. So the reason we get these amazing, amazing volunteers like Pavel and Jackie and Lexi and everybody else who's helping is because we all believe that the transformation of downtown Las Vegas is one day going to become a blueprint for anybody who wants to have the feel of a community at the scale of a city. And we don't think that's going to be the kind of blueprint that you can actually hand to an architect. We think it's going to be the kind of blueprint that actually is and is so into the fabric of the support that the community gives each other with everybody's individual goals. So this podcast gives us the chance to step back from our day-to-day lives and our myriad of activities that take up our brains all day and see the kind of progress that the entire community is making so that we can sort of bask in a collective glory. So um, we're about to step into the shoes of the many small business owners, entrepreneurs, and tech nerds that are defining just how this city-sized experiment plays out. And to keep us socially lubricated is this man. We've got Kent from Atomic Liquors, and he's here today. And uh, I guess you guys are actually the Las Vegas' oldest bar? Correct. Okay, because I saw it in the fact sheet here, but you got to be careful. Everybody's lucky. Yeah. (laughs) Well, very cool. So tell us about what's going on down at Atomic Liquors. Well, you know, like like Joe Downtown wrote the other day, he said, you know, we we got to keep track of how much free publicity you've had because it's just ridiculous. Hmm. It, it, It took us a year to rebuild the place, which we built it like new old i mean we didn't change anything in the place we just put new flooring a new bar on top of the old bar stuff like that and we've actually like the pawn stars were you've probably heard of the yeah. guys that do the thing up the street yeah we can see them out the window almost right yeah. right, right well, well i'm always watching for a they good deal actually um they they were in three weeks ago to film their next season is going to be filmed inside the place so that every beginning of the show you're going to see inside the atomic but what's really cool Whoa. is yeah. this sunday at 7 p.m anthony bourdain is doing a season ending show of his second season at the atomic live it's going to 270 million households 200 countries live wow. down at atomic on Sunday at 7 p.m. That's amazing. It's High five to that. that. It's great yeah. to have yeah. yeah. three last week. <laughs> well, that's awesome. So, we're, you know, it's good for all of us. No, it definitely is. And, you know, I mean, more and more, I've noticed all my friends hanging out there. I've been down at Atomic Liquors a number of times this week. So, thank you. yeah, we're definitely <laughs> getting, getting it going. So, okay, but yeah, but everybody, they can check you out uh, on Twitter. You're at Atomic Liquors LV. And then your website is Atomic, Atomic Las Vegas. I don't remember at some point. It's good. Right, right, it's right, good. Right, right, right. All right, well, thank you one last time. We appreciate thank it. You, Give sir. a big round of applause. Appreciate thank it. you, Ken. It's a good time to do it too because tonight we have Inks Trip Life crew in the house. So you guys know you're always being filmed, but today you're actually being filmed for two different reasons. Um, Inks Trip Life is here to shadow Ticket Cake. Um, they're going to learn a little bit about our company, and then they're also here to learn about what the downtown Las Vegas community has um, over the next few days. So you might see these guys run around with cameras around here, and they're here to, to tell the world about all the cool stuff we're doing. So, right. so. I like that there's there's someone filming entrepreneurs who are filming about other entrepreneurs. Okay, very meta. Very meta. <laughs> like really it, yes. <laughs> okay, so the, the first news event we have coming up this week is from Peter Awood, and he's from Good Blogs, and you guys have been visiting Vegas and having yes. a look around downtown Vegas Tech, so uh, yeah. what have you been up to exactly? Um, other than drinking, Of maybe? course, okay. yeah, yeah, always. Course. Yeah, yeah, no, so we got to speak, we had a little session at Work in Progress about um, content marketing and how we feel it's, it's the future of SEO and social media. Right. So, had a whole session about that. Um, we got the PowerPoint or the Prezi online if you guys want to check it out. Excellent. This is a good resource, um, goodblogs.com forward slash Prezi. Okay. Um, and so just kind of talking about that and what we're doing and then also talking about what it's like to build a tech startup in Iowa, which is where we're from. Wow. Um, 
and actually specifically the middle of nowhere in the middle of nowhere because uh, our town is 6,800 people. So oh, wow, yeah. yeah, yeah. So just kind of what it's like to do that and, and dial up and, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, dial up exactly. Yeah. We just got this thing called broadband. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Revolutionary. Yeah, yeah. 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 I talk yeah, with Alan. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So what's your Prezi all about? Yeah. So I'm um, just kind of talking about content marketing and how. Um, it's it's you know co marketing's really been changing right and mm -hmm. we've seen that shift over the last few years where um, you want to push things out to the edge and let the users kind of talk about what they want to talk about that's kind of how good blogs works but right. more specifically push versus pull is what we say so instead of pushing your message out you're actually pulling people through right so letting them expose them to your brand indirectly through some like really captivating content that's compelling that they want to share and read and that's educating and helpful to them like earning um, your way in yeah, yeah you got to try a little how do these days right it can't just be all about yeah. like buy my stuff it's yeah there's so much noise and so and we've, we even referenced like the one of the oldest um, examples of that is John Deere. They actually did a, this magazine. It's still out. It's a publication called The Furrow Magazine. Mm -hmm. and it's late 1800s. And all it was was this resource for farmers, right? And it's just helpful information. And oh, by the way, branded by John Deere. And so it's not a new concept, but it's something that I think that we've missed and that people are really Fantastic. coming back to. Yeah. So if people want to find out more about this, you've got your Good Blogs website, right? Yep. So what's yep. the URL again? Goodblogs.com mm -hmm. and then forward slash Vegas is the, is the Prezi. Yeah. Excellent. Thank yeah. you so much, cool. Peter. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Next up, we have another champagne launch. We have another yes. move to downtown Vegas and the Vegas Tech Fund. So we're really excited to have Jonathan Jenkins here. And you it's are like a from. Weekly thing now. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. why it's really exciting. So you're from orderwithme.com. We are. And uh, first of all, we are welcoming you downtown with the champagne. But thank you, thank while you. Dylan pops this bottle for you, why don't you tell me a bit more sure. about what you're doing? Yeah, it's great are. to be here. We came all the way from China, actually. So we've only been back in the States for two Two months and so oh, yeah. after Welcome back. thanks after five years being in China I'm having a little reverse culture shock I'm sure uh, yeah, yeah absolutely. but uh, it's good to be in Vegas you know in China everything's booming and growing and, and here in Vegas we have the same kind of vibe in downtown so it's great to be mm -hmm. here you know our mission at order with me is really empowering small local businesses uh, they've challenged been challenged the last five or ten years especially against the big corporations and right, so right. you know from my own background as owning a small business and coming from a family of small business owners we know that sometimes they feel all alone and they mm -hmm. feel like but there's actually thousands of other small businesses across the country that do the same kind of things and sell the same kind of items they do. So at Order With Me, we actually aggregate the buying power. And so mm -hmm. we have 350 bike shops, hundreds of craft stores, thousands of roofing distributors, lots of different kind of industries. And they use the platform to manage all their orders all in one place. So they can manage all their purchase orders, invoices, and payments. Mm -hmm. And we use that buying power to negotiate better pricing with their distributors or all the way to factories in Asia. That's really oh, that's awesome. Cool. Yeah. That's yeah. a definite gap in the industry. It's yeah, fantastic. it is. We're excited okay. to be here. All right. So all I got to do, keep your thumb on there. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Yeah, they don't drink a lot of champagne so in China. It's a little bit of a. Yeah. I thought when you could just push that up and uh, and then congrats. I can't go. take your good luck from. Woo! Oh, yeah. Cool. All right, so you're here in Vegas. Um, how many people you got in the crew, and what are so you we're, looking to Yeah, we've actually brought some more over from China. We're bringing some other people that we had in Boston and Dallas. We just uh, closed our Series B. Ray uh, coming from Vegas Tech is the lead oh. there, so we're excited to be here. And uh, by the end of uh, Q1, we'll probably have around 25, 30 people here. So. Awesome. Okay. Well, we're yeah. really excited to have you Cheers on board. Cheers you in, yeah. Cool. thanks. Here you go. Welcome to Las Vegas. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. All right. So don't kill anyone with these. Can't have you in jail when you're doing work. in the kitchen yeah, right back now. Yeah, back row. Home run area, yeah. Oh yeah, it's got it's segments awesome. now, that's great. Right. Okay, so all those up the back, listen up, Hugs. because I'm going to be telling you about some really cool events this week. This week's theme is meet other women founders, innovators, hackers, and influencers in the downtown Las Vegas community. So you may think in tech that women are minority, and that is 
that is actually true in our town. However, this is where to find us and we're definitely very active in the community. So the first event I'm going to be talking about this week is the Girls in Tech Las Vegas Development Meeting that's going to be on Monday, November the 11th. Now I spy Christina at the front of the audience, as usual. She's a huge <laughs> supporter of our podcast. Yes, so we're very yeah. happy to talk about your event. Now I am actually coming down to this okay. one, which is awesome. But for those who have never come to a Girls in Tech Development Meeting before, it's very cool. It's all about getting together to discuss the future of the group as well as plan any events and brainstorm new events um, for the rest of the year as well. So it's a really good way to add back to your community and both men and women are welcome. And if you come down to Monday, the, November the 11th at 6.30 p.m., I'll see you there. You can go on meetup.com to find out where the location is because it does change from time to time. And I hope to see you there. Next up is the Women 2.0 Founder Friday. Now, Women 2.0 is actually a conference, which is very cool, um, and their Founder Friday Las Vegas launch is happening in conjunction with that. That's going to be on November the 15th, and it's going to be starting at 7 p.m. So it's going to be the closing of the conference, actually, which is really cool. So if you're a conference attendee, all you need to do is flash your badge and you get free entry to this, to this um, mixer, which is very cool. It's all about networking and meeting aspiring uh, entrepreneurs, current entrepreneurs, and investors in innovative cities around the world. And I would definitely say that our city is very innovative, particularly in this field, as well as just yeah. what we're doing with downtown Las Vegas. So I'm really excited to see this event here. Um, so definitely get to that. Okay, next up is Stitch Factory. It's Fashion Week in downtown Las Vegas, which is really exciting. And yeah. of course, because it's Stitch Factory, we have a lot of clever women that always come down to speak at these uh, speaker series. So on the 14th of November and the 15th of November, you can come on down from 5 till 7 p.m. at the Learning Village. And from 5 till 5.30 p.m., they have a mix and mingle, and sometimes they have food and drinks, so get down to that. We have some really talented speakers, such as Katie Zink, uh, Maddie Mack, um, and Mel Rose Bickerstaff, uh, as well as many others, and they're all going to be talking about their businesses as well as how they're innovating in the fashion space, which is really exciting. Um, next up is TEDx Fremont East Women. Now, oh, I believe that time you of the year last again, year. huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we did. When last year, that was right when we moved out here, and, and Jacqueline right here, Jacqueline Jensen gave a, a great speech, and um, also that's where we first met Sarah he Evans, who mm -hmm. is going to actually be replacing you for one week only next one week. week. Right. Well, I'm really excited to see her start her stuff because I've seen her public speak, and she's amazing. Yeah, so, yeah she's great. You guys yeah. definitely found a very good replacement. So um, you can join Jessica Tomlinson and Alexia Vernon this time in. The Alexia Vernon and, and Jessica are very, really well known in the circuit. They're going to be co-hosting TEDx Fremont East Women. And of course, this is happening the first week of December again uh, for the second time to coincide with TEDx Women, um, the, the actual um, week that they celebrate that. Um, so the downtown Las Vegas community are going to be hosting this on December the 15th, uh, sorry, December 5th um, at the center. Now, the center is on Maryland Parkway. It's just north of Charleston Boulevard. And uh, tickets are $43 on Ticket Cake. And I heard last year was just absolutely amazing so it's definitely good value yeah. to get to get those tickets and definitely get in early don't um, try and rock up on the day because these tickets do sell out really quickly as, as they did last year so that's going to be awesome and to close out our events segment we have Erica here from the Mob Museum and you're going to be talking about some of the upcoming events coming up there right Yes, uh, the Ma Museum is uh, not only a destination for people from around the world, but a great community partner here. And there's some wonderful community things coming up um, that we hope everyone here will take it. Will, will think about taking advantage of. Um, a week from tomorrow is November 15th. This is celebrated by the Ma Museum as Kefauver Day. It's the anniversary of one of the Kefauver Committee hearings into organized Ooh. crime um, that took place back in the 1950s. And actually, the one here in Las Vegas took place in the Ma Museum. Museum courtroom. Oh, um, admission is free for all Nevada residents all day and out-of-towners, because I know we have some out-of-towners here today, um, two-for-one prices wow. on nice. Keep Day. Uh, and then coming up right after that on December 5th, um, December 5th is the anniversary of Repeal Day, the repeal of Prohibition. Oh. Uh, we all like to celebrate yeah. our constitutional to right to imbibe. Yeah, drink to that. Where's my drink? I didn't bring my drink. Um, so the Mob Museum is really setting itself apart as the destination 
not only in Las Vegas, but I think emerging in the U.S. as the place to go and celebrate Repeal Day in fine fashion. That's so awesome. There'll be a, bat yeah. a backyard bootlegger <clears throat> party um, from 6 to 11 that night. It's $35 for all-you-can-drink draft beer, some hors d'oeuvres. And, wa and walking distance from here, too. Yeah, yeah. only That's walking perfect. distance. So be safe, everyone. Right. Um, walk home. <laughs> and uh, there'll be a fun um, Boss of the Bars contest mm -hmm. where downtown bar keeps representing their bars here downtown will have a chance Excellent. to compete for the repeal day cup it'll be the first annual um, event but we anticipate the this monumental trophy will become something of a cherished item to be displayed in bars for I imagine well thanks that Erica sounds, that sounds yeah, awesome sure, I'm definitely going to get that, that really to the does yeah sounds that's going to be amazing thank you for sharing that that's yeah, my I've pleasure love that place so cool and that's the events for this week thanks cool. guys thank you Sings and dances. He's amazing. He's amazing. All right, so our next guest is a Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter. He created his own record company, Sincere Soul Records, in 2012, so he's got his entrepreneurial chops. He's also considered a modern soul man by the New York Times, and he's recognized for his public speaking, stage acting, television, and film work. He's also garnered two gold-selling albums, and he can swoon at least one woman per music video. <laughs> so... Making his downtown podcast debut, this is Kenny Lattimore. Thank you for coming hey. out. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thanks, man. It's great to be here. <laughs> well, we're really excited to have you. As you know, we have a bunch of entrepreneurs in the audience. Yeah, but first, absolutely. I wanted to just get your feedback. You went on the downtown tour today, so you got to go through Tony's office. Tell me, did. what your, what did you think about uh, what we got going you on know, here? Such an amazing community. Um, so inspirational. I, I, I wanted to take all of the philosophies back and, and try to implement them somehow. Um, I felt like it was the most perfect environment to work, to grow, to have self-discovery. Uh, it was it was really amazing. Good. I've never seen anything like it. No, yeah, we didn't realize that as soon as we came through, it's something very special. So, what yeah. what people have you met so far, and how were your interactions with them? Well, we um, we Chris, Chrisette back there, you've been awesome, and uh, yeah. I mean, every everybody that uh, that to, that took us on a tour tried to give us as much diversity today as possible so that I would understand um, the beginnings of the company, which foundational uh, information is always important for any brand. Uh, and it's so funny because when we were talking about the record company, as a singer, I've been my own brand for like 20 years or yeah. so. So interesting starting over doing the record company is kind of what I felt. It's like a new beginning. So I relate with all the new companies that, that are coming up that Zappos is uh, pouring into. Uh, this a spirit of mentoring is what I felt was, was being revealed while oh, I was on the tour. Cool. And I thought that was incredible because it's what we need the most, I think, in, in order to gain success uh, in a more straight line, if you will. I think a lot of times we, we set out on a course and we think that we're doing the right things, we hope we're doing the right things, but it's always great to have someone that has had success really guide us. And they don't have to you know, pull us or, or you know, do everything. We, we still have to stand on our own feet. But it's something about that, that guidance that makes a huge difference. You had a mentor that you credit for some of your success, I guess, that we're going to talk know about what? him? I, kind of I've side had note, some but... people come in and out, but yeah. I didn't. You know, um, I oh. started to mentor quite a bit, and that <laughs> desire was birthed out of what I think I did not have. Oh, gotcha. And I saw a lot of young people trying to get started in, in uh, business, uh, goal setting, time management, just understanding their lives. And uh, my mother was a counselor at, at Howard University in Washington, D.C. I'm from D.C. And uh, through watching her, I was able to, uh, to just understand certain basic skills and then pass those on to some of the young people I was speaking with. Uh, awesome. Okay. So well, at least now they all have mentors. So that's yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, you know, I was kind of grappling with um, how you could help an entrepreneurial mind the most. And I was thinking about like what it is to be a singer, songwriter, and then what it is to like create a startup and what it is to um, be kind of this like small business type mm -hmm. person. And one of the connections I thought that'd be most important for you to talk on would be like how you communicate. What are the lessons that you've learned um, that go beyond singing that could really help someone like us? Um, that in, in branding, you're looking for your audience. 
you're not you don't even necessarily have to think about competing with anybody. I think <laughs> Zappos is like, oh, it's a lot of companies out there, but we are we're not competing. We are carving our own path. We're sticking to uh, looking for the people who who connect with us. And, uh, and that way you can continue to grow. I think in music and maybe in other corporations, a lot of times we stop for a minute and we think we need to shift because so-and-so's audience or so-and-so's brand seems to be bigger than ours. Mm. Um, and music is great because it's this, this great global language, you know, this, this language that transcends every culture, um, lifestyle, every every economic background, and it allows me to, to reach in and touch someone. Uh, but still, I have to think about sounds, I have to think about culture, I have to think about um, diversity within the community. And uh, one of the things that I did growing up is I always wanted to have no boundaries. So I sang classical music, jazz, gospel, okay. R&B, pop. Getting out of your comfort zone? Yeah, all yeah. of that. My comfort zone, I, I had to hear my voice, though, and identify with what most people thought was my strongest suit, which was singing anything with, that was smooth. I had a smooth texture to my voice. So um, what I felt was that instead of me just picking one brand or uh, in terms of um, music style, my brand would be the sound of my voice. I wanted to be bigger than just the music. Okay. And then even as a person, uh, as a brand or as a personal brand, thinking outside of the box so that I wouldn't put myself in a position where um, after I did that one thing, it's almost like having one trick. Right, right. You know, that your, your career is over. So yeah, not competing with people and trying to transcend above. No, and, yeah. and try, to tr try to remain as diverse as possible. Okay. So uh, in, in, taking that into, uh, I guess, other, other parts of, of industry and in, cor in corporate business, um, it's, it's exactly, again, what Zappos has done and, uh, and what Tony's done, where you've got all of these companies now that are attached. He figured out a way to expand himself outside of one dimension so that when we think of, okay, this is what the corporation is, as soon as we think we've got that pegged, it's like, no, there's an expansion. Right. There's, there's something stemming off. So, uh, no, it's great. And that keeps you alive. Right. Everybody loves having their piece of it, too. Absolutely. Um, okay. So, what, like, everybody's always like, be yourself and be confident. Like, mm. well, what, is, what does that mean? Like, what do you mean, be, be confident? Like, Oof. You know, I think that's a, that's a progressive kind of thing. I don't think that any, well, some people do, are, they come into the world and they're just like, here I am. This is what my idea is. But I think for most of us, it's a progression. You can spend 10 years, and I know people that have done this, 10, 20 years and have a successful business and lose passion for that particular business and find themselves feeling like they're starting over and they're going into another mm -hmm. direction. Um, but I think that it's the evolution of, of being a human being. I think we're always changing and we're growing. You're not the same person thinking the same way that you were at 20 years old as you are at 40, as you will be at 60 or what have you. So um, I think business is, is about passion, loving what you do. Um, that makes a huge difference and, and I think having that passion loving what you do impacts how long you you stay at it right and how, how confident how you are is based on your passion sort of to solve the problem and th and that develops it, yeah. it you know it's um and i know that s certain financial success uh seems to give people that confidence but i'm just a man of faith just <laughs> straight faith um and um, because of the faith that I grew up with, and I mean, it started with me like in church and things, hearing, hearing different Bible stories and things like that. That is what I was familiar with. So I tried to use the little things that I did know right. and, kind of like uh, an unwavering and be positive. Belief that you can have get an it done. unwavering yeah. belief. So um, if it's not about God for you or if you don't believe the same things, um, I think that everybody has faith in something, even yeah. if it's faith to sit down in that chair. That you know, you, that is you, not going to break on you, and you end up with that structure and you say, all over you. And like, yeah. yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> and, and, and that's faith that it's at its lowest <laughs> level. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, actually, I mean, that'd be a great segue into this next question. So I think this is something really fascinating. So you said before you go on stage, when you've got yes. people screaming for you, and you've got that extra adrenaline going, and it's really easy to become deer in headlight. You say you pray, you kind of get some of your friends around, and you get into a group. Now, tell me specifically how this affects your mental state and what are the things that could be general someone maybe who doesn't have as much faith exactly in god but how could they kind of capture that and what are the benefits of it well when i think about the communication i think about okay i'm going to give even to this audience today i could come up here and be a nervous wreck like i don't know what they're going to ask me yeah oh my god Start my life, but yeah. 
but my purpose and my objective is to give. So if I'm going to give, I have to think, what, what can I do? What can I authentically give from myself that is going to translate? So um, as a music artist, just like uh, being an, an entrepreneur in corporate America or, or globally, you start out doing something and it's, it's a risk. So you're nervous. You're just like, oh my gosh, is this going to be perfect? I want it to be right. perfect. This is the first time they're seeing my brand. <laughs> I've got to make this presentation. I want, it. I want the deal. I want to close the deal. That same kind of energy I think everybody feels at some point. I feel it on a more consistent basis because <laughs> I work in a business that you are only as good as the last thing that you did, and you're constantly proving yourself over and over again. As soon as I leave Vegas and I go to, to Dallas or I go into Boston right. or whatever oh, that's city true. it is, that's a fresh it's like a fresh slate. start all yeah. over again. And even when I come back to Vegas, we'll forget. Be more yeah. Yeah, you forget. <laughs> and, and people are like, oh my gosh, can he do it again? Can he <laughs> prove himself again? But um, that kind of, of having that kind of obstacle before you each time, I think that the only thing you can do is be authentic no matter what. Glad that you Thank came you. down to downtown Las Vegas to check it out. Thank and you. Um, if you guys want to hear more, you can always just YouTube his name and a million things will come up. But the official website is Kenny Lattimore with two T's.com. And you can see him at Twitter at Kenny Lattimore. And thank you very much for coming Thank out and talk to us. Me. We appreciate it. Thank I you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Lindsay now. Lindsay is a pretty cool dude. He's been organizing some wearable tech meetups in downtown Las Vegas, right? Yes, yeah. And we're going to be having another one in, uh, in about three weeks. So, so uh, hopefully we'll, that'll get off the ground. Yeah. I'm going to have to bring my meow shoes down and start yes, meowing. I need to see these. I, want, I, do, I just don't understand how you've done it. I want to see how you made some shoes meow. Okay, we're, we're going to talk later. But I have one question for you. And the question is, if you were going to take someone out on a date in downtown Las Vegas, where would you take them and why? Wow. So... This is kind of a surprising question because a lot of people don't realize that I actually have a, a family. I, I have a partner, uh, my love of my life, Amelia, and uh, a daughter, Pearl, back in Ireland. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping, I came over here looking for some opportunities and following my dream, and I'm hoping that they will follow me here. And uh, if, if and when I bring them to Vegas, uh, I, I've only been here a month, so... I'm thinking Latai. Yeah, I've got this this day planned out in my head already, and and do some like uh, the, the 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 Thai coffee. The, I've, those are amazing. They're really good. Yeah, no, no, I'm down with that. Yeah, yeah. Anyone that's tried them. And then uh, so so getting into the evening, we'd probably have to have dinner and then put Pearl to bed. And if we're in maybe the Ogden or one of these other high rises, I'd love to go up on the rooftop and just look out over the city with some champagne. I'll, I'll steal some of your champagne this evening. And <laughs> so I think that's... <laughs> so in my opinion, they'd have to be crazy not to move here, right? Yes, of course. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, and I'm going to send them this link, and I'm going to be like, look, this is the plan, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Cali 